come to save the day. Welcome to Mighty House. This is a show for people with problems. Home improvement problems, that is. And for people who want common sense guidance on how to build green and live a more sustainable lifestyle. Send an email. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, we're back. And today we've got a new product for you to check out. And uh, this is something Rich found and uh, brought it to my attention. So I, we thought maybe we'd uh, share it with everybody and let you know what it is. So before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and uh, dingle on the bell. You'll get notified next time we do something. And you can also leave us a comment below and uh, let us know what you think about this new product. So we've got something new here. I'm going to click on the share screen button right here. And we've got this. Yes. And explain what this does. All right, so it, it just all came about is that, uh, you know, we're in hurricane country and you know, when storms are coming, everybody wants to hook up a generator. So everybody knows you can back feed through an outlet to your panel and there's safety issues involved with that. Or you get a full blown standalone generator with switching equipment, ATS switching. Right. And that can be really expensive. So this, our power company down here, LCEC, the Lee County Electrical Co-op, they offer this product. It's made by Generlink, but it's offered by LCEC. It goes behind your meter and you plug your generator right into it. And quite honestly, it just senses when your generator's fired up and it turns off the feeds from the power company. Check that out. So this is kind of a no brainer kind of thing is basically which outlet do you want to plug your generator? In? Do you want to use the dryer? Do you want to use the table saw? Do you want to use the air conditioner? Or wait, let's use the outlet on the meter. Right. And and you can back feed the whole house right here. So you pop this cover off. You just plug this. You take the old meter off. You plug this in. And all it does is just it goes between the meter socket. So now you're plugging the meter back mm -hmm. into this Jenner link. And then you put this collar on there. You tag this. You tag that. Seals it up. And that, now she's off and running. So it works pretty slick. So now you're just plugging it in right, right here and your generator's outside. It's not in the garage right? because the cords aren't long enough. And then now you're getting carbon monoxide poisoning because you've got the stupid thing running in the garage. So that is a, it, it's a major difference and you can move it away from windows and stuff this way. So the right. generator's not like sitting in a weird spot. Exactly. So it's, it's pretty slick. So here's here's some of the models and stuff. So yeah, they offer them in a 30 amp configuration and a 40 amp configuration, right? right? And then they also went a step further, and you can get either one of those with uh, with uh, surge protection. So I mean, I'm sure it's a little upcharge for that, but it's not bad. Like during a storm and all that, you know, it's pretty easy to get surges. So having sure. surge protection is nice. Sure, you'll get a spike with uh, you know, if a tree falls on the on the power lines and and pops them, or they're turning it on and off, making connections, and mm -hmm. you'll get a, get that first surge as as the power comes back on, so that'll help protect that. And they they've got that both in thirty and forty amp options, and then they have pre made power cables for you that to plug into your generator. So if you know what locking or or a type of outlet is on your generator. If it's producing 220 volts, 240, you you can actually reselect your your plug options there, right? And, and let them know. Yeah, you can order them up to 100 foot. It, it it actually says that each one comes with 20 feet of cord. Oh, it oh it comes with well, the LCEC offering. At least it comes with 20 feet of cord, and but you can go to the to Generlink and order up to 100 foot cords. Yes. So again, we talked about it. You know, you may not need to upgrade that cord for anything hundred feet or less, but you know, you start going over, you know, you're definitely gonna wanna change wire size. And then uh, go back to the LCEC website real quick, because that was our our power company and they were actually offering that that system for 30 amp, it was $825 plus tax installed and for 40 amp, $980 plus tax installed. Yes. That's pretty cheap to get something set up and running. And that's that, that includes your 20 foot cord. Yeah. 
that's like that. And the power companies coming out, pulling your meter, doing all that. I mean, it just seems crazy to me that no brainer. Yeah. And that that's, that's really a safe way to do it. it, yeah. it and it, 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 because it's disconnecting from the grid. And okay. So we know we can get that collar and we know that, but what about our own cords? Like if we're doing ourselves, how do we size our wire for that? Cause we did. Okay. That. So if you're going to, if you're going to size your own, then you're going to use table 31016. And, and that is out of the national electric code. And in most cases it's, you, you've got three, you've got three different categories of insulation. So that's why you have these here. And most wires today are going to be THHN. So you're going to find fall in this 90 Celsius category. And if you notice here, they have all these asterisks next to these, these, uh, these, these wire sizes. These are the most common, 14, 12, and 10. Those are the most common ones you're going to use in a house. Mm -hmm. So the asterisk, if you go down through the table, you actually have to derate these. So even though a uh, number 14 is rated for 25 amps in THHN, you can only run 15 amps through it because it's derated. 12, it'll handle 30, but you can only run 20 through it. And then a number 10 can handle 40, but it's derated to 30. So if you were if you were using these in your house, you would have to kind of follow that code. But um, you know, you could also, if you made it out of number eight. You've got you could run up to 55 amps on that and, and still be safe. That way, if you ever got a larger generator, or did something like that, you could always continue to use that same size wire. So when you're when you're sizing your wire, you want to kind of follow this guideline. Right. Um, and then you, you you could undersize it, but that you're gonna have problems. And, and now you're starting to create heat cables instead of uh <laughs> anything else right yeah if the wire's too small you create resistance so it just generates heat so yeah right. you're better with a little oversized so right so then rich also found this little wicked website and it's called wire and cable your way and you can click on the wire size you want if you want number 10 you click on that and then it comes up with the generator cord option or the type w the s o o w generator cord is a shielded so it, it keeps the uh, the uh, electromagnetic interference to a minimum. Right. So the magnetic fields are are shielded that way. If you're running the cords outside, you may not need it. Don't need to worry about it. But you're looking at two, three bucks a foot. And then if you go to the number eight, if you want to upsize that, they in the type W, that's only a buck fifty eight a foot. So. Why not go shielded or unshielded if you if you didn't need it, and a number eight and 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 have it for under two bucks. And they're showing ampacity at eighty, which I think the NAC chart just showed fifty five. Correct. That's ampacity. Well, here's a number ten. They're showing thirty. Four. That the number that's a four conductor. So that's the other thing we should talk about real quick. There's three conductor and four conductor in here. I would suggest you get the four conductor and go to your, go to your plugs. There you go. Just my so plugs. You know, you're gonna oh. use it, you're gonna use a type 14 plug. And they, you know, you buy the male and a female part of that. So the female plug is gonna go on the panel. You're gonna get a box, mount that female plug in there. Um, so that you can plug into it if you were going to try and just backfeed your panel. Right. Um, but you're going to, this is probably going to be on your generator. So whatever your generator has, you're going to do the same. And they, they're most likely going to be a four conductor. Mm -hmm. So you can see the G is your ground. That's the green. Then you have line one X, line two Y, and then white is your neutral. So that's how, how those get wired. And in this case, it, if you bought them from this company, they're already pre-wired, you're done. But if you wanted to make your own, this is how you would do it. Yeah, you might have a generator and a quarter ready or whatever, or you're working on it yourself. So we're just giving you some bits and pieces so you can put this together yourself, you figure it out, you know, but when we post this, if you put it in the notes and let us know if ComEd allows it. Right, or or your local municipality or no, local uh, utility company, check with them, see if they allow them to be installed. 
uh, you're you're going to be cutting the tag. So, <laughs> and when you if you have a smart meter, as soon as you pull that meter, they know that the power is off, and yeah. and they they'll show up rather quickly if if you have the smart meter options. So, and a lot of the municipalities, at least around here, they all have the smart meter. And I can only imagine they're doing it all over the country if they're doing it here. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, this is a great option. Check with the utility, see if they allow it. And this is a great safe way to do it. I, I can't see why they wouldn't allow it. And right. they may come out and install it for you, or they may tell you, you can buy it, go ahead and have an electrician install it, and then call us when you're done, and they'll come out and re-tag the, the, right. the meter. So it's 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 a pretty good option. I don't know. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm glad you brought it up because <laughs> I think it's just it's it's an incredible option and it's a well, great. Like I said, you know, a lot of people we know how to do some of this stuff, and a lot of these people have no way of making a plug on their panel. They just sure. you know not without hiring an electrician. You know, they're going to kill themselves trying. Or this, the panel's full. Maybe panel's maybe full. Have, yeah, you don't have room to add it. Yeah, but this is just such a cool way to do it. <laughs> yeah really slick so all right so check it out it is the generlink backup generator uh plug, plug module it's plug and transfer plug. switch yeah there you go so all right uh, i'll stop the share there you go so go ahead click on that subscribe button dingle on the bell and if you want to hear hear more from us and then also go ahead and uh leave a note below and let us know if your municipality is allowing you to use this, because I'd be curious to see how many areas around the country we can actually start using these things. Yes. So there you go. Uh, with that, let's say keep it square and level. Till next time. Until next time.